traces of a failed supervolcano super eruption in the Andes. This is on uh, fizz.org. Aerial photos showing the Chao volcano in northern Chile with a lava coulee approximately 14.5 kilometers long. Geoscientists from Heidelberg University have discovered accumulations of magma in the Andes, sufficient to have set off a super eruption, but which in fact did not. Such eruptions, which expel enormous quantities of magma, are the largest volcanic events on Earth. Together with colleagues from the USA, researchers from the Institute of Earth Sciences discovered that magma volumes of supervolcanic proportions have been continuously accumulating in the Altiplano Puna region since the last super eruption nearly 2.9 million years ago. These magmas, however, did not reach the surface to trigger a catastrophic eruption, but instead slowly cooled at depth and hardened into plutonic rock. The results of the research were published in the journal Geology. They said, quote, a supervolcanic eruption spews out more than 1,000 cubic kilometers of magma, which accumulated over time in reservoirs close to the Earth's surface. This is what Professor Dr. Axel Schmidt explains. He's of the Institute of Earth Sciences. He adds, in turn, these reservoirs are fed from deeper layers in the Earth's crust and, are, and the underlying mantle. During an eruption, the overlying rock layers collapse into the empty magma chamber and form depressions known as calderas of up to 100 kilometers in diameter. Axel Schmidt indicates that there have been at least seven super eruptions in the Altiplano Puna region within the last 10 million years, the most recent one at about 2.9 million years ago. What remains unclear is why no further major eruptions have occurred since then and whether the region can now be considered inactive for such events. Using samples from five comparatively small lava domes in northern Chile and southeast Bolivia, the Heidelberg researchers and their American colleagues investigated the most recent eruptions whose chemical compositions matches the supervolcanic magmas from the region. They determined the age of very small zircon crystals from these lava flows with the aid of a high spatial resolution mass spectrometer. Quote, the mineral zircon forms almost exclusively in magmas, so its age reveals when those magmas were present under the volcano, end quote, explains Axel Schmidt. The astonishing result was that the ages of the zircons measured from all five of the smaller volcanoes extended continuously from the time of the eruption 75,000 years ago, back to the last supervolcanic eruption. This just about the time the smaller uh, Yellowstone eruption took place. At, uh, after the 640,000 years ago, it also took place with the smaller eruption about 74,000 years ago. This one here says it was 75,000 years ago to the last supervolcanic eruption. Professor Smith reports that Model calculations demonstrated that zircon formation is only possible over such protracted durations if the inflow of magma amounted to approximately one cubic kilometer over a thousand years, which is unusually high for a relatively small volcano. This means that over a longer period of time, a magma volume of supervolcanic proportions must have accumulated under the five lava domes which has then solidified into plutonic rock at depths. The volc uh, volcanologist explains that the lack of a major volcanic eruption does not necessarily indicate that magmatic activity has come to a complete halt. Perhaps the rise in magma from deeper regions merely slowed down uh, during the last 2.9 million years, forming an enormous body of rock known as a pluton. However, our results also show that a relatively small increase in long-term magma recharge from about 1 to 5 cubic kilometers in 1,000 years would recreate conditions favoring a catastrophic supervolcanic eruption. A new super eruption in the Altiplano Puna region would be possible, but only after a long lead time 
examples uh, explained by Professor Schmidt. And this is on phys.org. I'll leave a link below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.